Hi, my name is Patrick Keene, and today I have the pleasure of talking with the great artist, sculptor, engineer, and puppeteer, Chris Towell, about his solo show here at the Nutra Museum and Gallery in sunny Silver Lake, Los Angeles, California. Chris has an amazing background sculpting and creating special effects for movies such as Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Pirates of the Caribbean, Avatar, Team America, Star Trek, War of the Worlds, Time Machine, the list goes on and on. Chris, how did you get your start in this business? I was born in um, a really small town in North Yorkshire, England, where there was, there was no film industry at all. It was more farming and um, industry. And uh, my parents encouraged me to paint and draw, and my brothers as well. And obviously I was good at it, so I thought I'd like to do more of this. And then I found clay, which was amazing. I could do all sorts with clay. So I started getting better and better at sculpting and I got um, decided that this is where I want to do a, a career. So uh, eventually I got work in a, 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 a big town called York, near where I used to live, doing uh, visitor centers. And um, they would do like, have you heard of like the dungeon where they do reacting of all these terrible things that happened in dungeons. So um, I would create the characters and the animation for those and then eventually got work on commercials and then uh, went to London on and off to get work in the films. So that was the slow, painful journey to getting work there. I knew the time and the space uh, as a young person to create your own world and have these visions? And um, relatively. I was doing a, a permanent job as an electrician as well because um, you know, there wasn't many jobs for artists where I lived and um, so I was working as an electrician as, as well as doing my sculptural work and eventually I stopped being an electrician and concentrated on being an artist. So how did you develop your career? Um, well, eventually I had to move to London and that's where my wife Natalie came and we met in the small town where I'm from. She was working in France and she came over and we decided we got to go to London. This is where everything's working. So we, we moved to London, opened a studio and then things, again, it took a long time to develop but eventually we got work from the BBC and other big companies and then worked on feature films as well in the big studios around London. So that's how it developed really slowly, but as soon as you get your name and you do good work, then eventually you can get, keep going through film to film. And you both, you and your wife Natalie, both have creative uh, abilities that oh, yeah. work well She's with each other. She's an amazing artist, yeah. So we worked together on some projects, and uh, in our studio she would do like scenic work and, and painting things, and I would do the sculpture and effects and we'd do them both for the same films or the TV or wherever it was and that would, that would work. Who influenced you, would you say, in the course of your life? That's a great question. Um, obviously I watched a few TV. I used to love comedy, that's where I got my influence from. So uh, like Mel Brooks, um, Jim Henson was a big one. Uh, and some of the old caricature artists from the 18th and 19th century I used to love their drawings and I wanted to do caricature and like they did. So that's, that's really my big influences and, and just comedy, yeah. British comedy, Marty Feldman, all of, you know, Monty Pythons, all those people. Yeah, it was, it's funny me. to hear an Englishman talk about American comedic influences or, or artists like Henson and Mel Brooks. Yeah. Because normally I'm trying to aspire to <laughs> yeah. be, you know, embraced by English audiences. I just always found them. Yeah, Mel Brooks is amazing. Uh, now, do you have a studio of your own? Yeah, I have one in North Hollywood. It's a small studio. It's part of a, a big warehouse where I share it with two other people. A set, um, they make build sets, and the other is a auto, auto um, like a rocket. They sell rockets and things. So it's amazing. a good, good place for me to be where I can get parts for the uh, machines I make. The Valley in Los Angeles has everything. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. it's so vast, but it's so, these, these uh, warehouses, who knows what's going on. It's true. Uh, I, I think that that's a whole nother documentary. <laughs> um, can you tell us about your love of caricature? Yeah. I, um, it's hard for me to sculpt 
it's like say I was sculpting you. I, it's hard for me to do it realistic. I have to pull those features that you know stand out and create something slightly warped and surreal. So that I'll take it. It's just yeah, my yeah. Could, it's just my <laughs> mind. I can't. I just I enjoy that more than anything. And again, the humor, like this character, I like to bring humor into my sculpting. Yeah, it's this character here is uh, the specifics of it. There's so much more behind. It's not just the machine that he's operating. Right. It's the face and that he's making. And it's like, what's this guy's story? I'm like, yeah. Why well, am he's I? he's based on Terry Thomas, an old sure. British actor, and. Um, yeah, you know, he's, he's perfect for this oh. type of vehicle. Yeah, and I love that coat. Who doesn't want that coat? <laughs> now, what materials do you use in your art? Um, I start out with what I call wet clay. You know, it's, it's, you get it out of a bag and you create the sculpture on an armature, which is like a frame that you build and put the, build the clay onto that. When that's finished, and I'm happy with it, I... Um, seal it, then I build a, a silicon or fiberglass mold of that so I can recreate that either in resin or silicon or bronze. So then uh, when that's done, I'll cast things in the mold, like say like a bronze or, or a urethane plastic. So that's basically what, what I do, but I also work with um, motors servo motors, um, mechanical mechanisms, anything that puts these together, electrical circuits. Um, so the and painting, I forgot about the painting. I love using acrylics. Or if I'm painting a creature in silicon, I use a, the same silicon that it's made out of and I paint that on the outside of it. So it brings that out and I add pigments to the silicon to get that. So there's a lot of processes that goes into creating all these things. Yeah, I mean, you're almost like a demolition expert where you like to maybe destroy and build back up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But not completely destroy because you'll find something yeah, out I'll, of Yeah, I'll exists. find like this yeah. fire extinguisher is a good example. I mean, I saw a vehicle in it straight away, so I thought that's where it needs to be. It needs to be a, a rocket racing car. So. Wow, that's... Uh, so really, you just never let... Uh, convention or, or the institute, not the institution, you never let convention or the establishment control your brain. You've always been th thinking like a child, thinking Definitely. creatively, dream yeah. world. Yeah, and I see fan. alternatives to what they're made for. I think yeah. like, like a, a dustpan could be a, somebody's mouth. You know, I just see different things, strange, strangely. <laughs> yeah. Well, those blowfish. <laughs> the blobfish. I still, those keep me up nights. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway. Um, and what is the process? Um, you mean how, how do I create them? Yeah. Um, well, I, it's the same way. I just, I, what, the mechanical side of it, I, um, I get like this fire extinguisher, for instance. And um, I know I have to make all the components that, that look fairly real, like it has a radiator, and I just fashion them, you know, to metal or brass or springs or wherever it takes. I take stuff apart and then just attach it to that so it looks real. And then the art in finishing is painting it to age it so it looks old. And a lot of that is just with acrylics, so it looks old. And, that's basically how I do it. I mean, is this something you can teach or coach? I, I don't see how you could teach this. Um, I think you can. you can. I think you can if um, if they understand about color and and textures. And um, it's a process, though. It takes a while to to get to that, but you can do it definitely. Okay. Yeah. It's unusual that as an artist and sculptor, you are also skilled in building mechanisms and electric circuits. Can you speak to that? I mean, combining arts with engineering yeah, and science, I know it seems it's, like it's, opposite ends of the spectrum. I think, again, that's back to my childhood where we had, um, I'm old, so we had lots of steam engines still running on the tracks you know, in, in North Yorkshire. So I've always been influenced by steam and, and machines, and I always built my own bikes, created everything. So my brothers were the same, so I think that's where it comes from. I just like creating things and from nothing. So, yeah. And that's it, where your love of steampunk 
That's it. Yeah. yeah. I, and again, I don't know if it is steampunk or not. It's that's a title I've almost gave this, but it's just that old vintage look that steampunk's embraced. It's a good word. I, I feel like it's a good two syllable. Yeah. Uh, you know, it does. But there's part well. of steampunk that I don't think I like too okay. much. You know. Right. So it's it's bordering on steampunk. Okay, bordering. So until we find another. <laughs> it's kinetic. Adjacent maybe. steampunk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where can collectors find your work? They can find me on my website, and social media, uh, my Instagram, uh, Facebook, and we'll probably give those at the end of this interview, I would think. I do love, uh, that's one of my favorite um, Instagram accounts, is your, your it's <laughs> just amazing, and it's an easy go-to when I show people, I'm like, right. here, I, you know, and just scroll through, you know, you just know <laughs> it's going to be good. Thank you. you know. What have you got planned for your next projects? I have something really exciting for myself. I, um, do you know the old vintage style vacuum cleaners? They're, they're long and similar to this, but they're flat. I've got an Electrolux one. It's like a turquoise and chrome. I thought, I'm going to make a, a Hyperloop train with Elon Musk inside it. So that's my next project. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's and he's going to be sat sat back like this, not driving, because it's self-driving through the, the tunnel. Wow, your brain knows no limitations. Uh, I think so. I'm also going to be doing some more um, skulls. I'll, you know, like that skull there, for instance, I, I'm going to make more of those. I enjoy doing that. More skulls is always good. Yeah. <laughs> always good. And also, I'm working with a, a, a jeweler, a jewel trader, and I'm making some um, opal, four opal, that um, he's going to be selling on uh, like a collaboration together. So well, that's exciting as well. Yeah, a lot of projects. Yeah, there. yeah. And there's really no, I mean, there's nobody who wouldn't gain from working with you, you know, whether someone was very commercially involved in some capacity or I'd hope so. artistically, there's so much you can do, you know. Thank you. So, um, now, do you teach? Not yet. Not yet, okay. I have taught when I've been working on films, you know, with people that are, are new and young in, in the industry and I've shown them how to do things but I want to teach. I want to give back out and, and show all the disciplines from sculpting, mold making, casting, servo motors for animatronics, working with silicons, everything you know through what I've learned and um, teach that. Do people that you come in contact with, I mean they're probably thrown by the fact that you have the artistic and the science background yeah and they don't believe me yeah that, that uh, I do everything yeah and that's not bragging it's just no no it's I, the I, reality I, I enjoy doing everything yeah so and it just I need to do that it's yeah. all you know, all part of it uh, where can we find Chris Tal's work on YouTube um, I've got my own YouTube page okay. um, it's Chris Tal Living Image Studios and again I intend to do more of that I think I want to demonstrate, you know, the ones you were describing. You yeah. enjoy seeing more of those little snippets on how I build things, how I sculpt things, how I paint things. I think that would be um, interesting for people. Can you tell us about uh, your work in the movies? What was your favorite project? What was your most challenging project? Wow, favorite ones? Probably Team America. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's you know, that, that was great fun to work on and some wonderful things to create and I got a chance to work with Matt and Trey a little bit. That's got to be a thrill that uh, you guys got to just talk to each other, spend time yeah. together and yeah. similar sensibilities. It was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy that, you know, it doesn't happen very often. And yeah, and it's the comedy first. They, they're not married to any, they're not tied no, down no. to No, no. In any. fact, the, I, think, I think it was Matt was sleeping in the parking lot in a camper van because he kept rewriting things. So he was like, write things and come and change that for the next day. So it was a constant yeah. flux. That committed at that point. Oh, he, they were well enough off. They could just drive home every night. Was it shot in LA, Los Angeles? Yeah, or was that in, yeah okay. in Culver. Culver, OK. Yeah. Um, one of the worst experiences. I've got so many. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what do you think? You know, one of the most demanding jobs was TV, working on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Not that Jimmy, Jimmy's great, but the amount of work I had to do in such a short time, it was so demanding and so tiring and nerve-wracking as well, because you have to be 
um, on set, you know, and it's live. So that's one of them. And you get an assignment at 11 a.m. that needs to be ready yeah. to go yeah. by it's, 2, 3, it's 4 for crazy. that night. So they say, can you make a, a drone that dumps gravy, you know, for tonight? So you say, oh, okay, I'll do my best. And you hope yeah. that it works. And then when it doesn't work, you really get it. Yeah. But, yeah, it's tough. A drone what, drone. One of my other, this is really funny, is um, I built this giant monster in um, Shepparton Studios in England. And it had two heads, animatronic. But I was inside with a, another guy puppeteering the arms inside the body. It was about eight feet tall. And we were up to our waist in, in water, because it was in a river. like a. So it was really hot and tiring. And the guy next to me kept going, Oof. I thought, oh no, he's gonna, and he, and he puked all over. And it was just me and him inside there, and he was floating in this water. That was one of the, yeah, vomit. Worst yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was close to vomit. Yeah, yeah. Well. it will. It will. <laughs> the, yeah, with, with vomit, you really need it to go away out of your line yeah. of sight, yeah, out of your line. That's of, the thing. I've had. Yeah. I've had. Uh, I was puppeteering a, a head that was covered in maggots, real maggots. We had the maggot wrangler there watching, and all the maggots started crawling down and going into my mouth, and I was and still. You can't operating. do anything. You can't working. do anything. I have to eat the maggots. And the puppet wrangler was making sure I wasn't harming these magnets, uh, maggots and magnets. <laughs> oh my God, okay. So, yeah, that's lots hazard, of great right? experiences. Yeah, 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 I'm glad yeah. you're out of that. I hope yeah. you don't have to return yeah. to that at all. Uh, I love that he's worried about the maggots that are oh, in yeah. your mouth. It was a thing, it, Can you imagine a, a maggot wrangler? Yeah, yeah. I, I would think that anything on the outside of your body is theirs, but once it goes inside your mouth, like you're not right, responsible right. for something. And they once. smell awful. Maggots do. Yeah. On top of everything yeah. else. All right. Um, is the public able to visit your studio? Yes. If they go to my website, they can fill a little form in okay. and they can come along. And I, I like that. I love people coming to visit. Um, before COVID, I had some kids come from um, Caltech. They were a makers group. And that was a big thrill for them. And I enjoyed that so much. So I'd, not just kids, but anybody. Yeah. I welcome anybody to come to my studio and see what I do. That's fun that they, they see where that there's no limits. Oh, yeah. 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 And I was giving examples of things, how to do it. But again, I'd like to show kids just basic sculpting, basic um, mechanisms, you know. Yeah, I, it's great. unbelievable. I mean, you could teach a class in physics, chemistry, art. It's just it blows yeah, away. Yeah, it's great shop, fun. Wood, sure, shop, rather. Okay. Well, thank you, Chris. It's been fascinating learning about you and your art, and we look forward to more of it in the years to come. Thanks, Patrick. All right. Bye-bye.